Hello once again, physics friends. Today in this video, we're going to talk about the second postulate of relativity. So last time we talked about the principle of relativity, and today we are going to focus on the fact, the experimental fact, that the speed of light appears to be constant, independent of the speed of the thing that emitted the light. And that is a very uh, bizarre thing um, to understand. Remember, with our example of Alice on the train throwing a ball and Bob on the ground measuring the speed of that ball, the speed for the ball that Bob measures is most certainly dependent on the speed of the train, right? The faster the train is approaching him, the faster he measures the ball to go. But we said if we replace the ball with a photon, no matter how fast that train is going, Bob is always going to measure the photon moving at the speed of light, one foot per nanosecond, even if the train itself was going at 90% of the speed of light. You might remember that we already introduced this idea that the speed of the photon is independent of the speed of the source of that photon. And when we did so, I um, stated and acknowledged that that is kind of a weird thing. Um, but I just want to, like, at this moment, to pause and really have us appreciate just how bizarre that is, right? I mean, it is completely different than anything in your daily experience, right? The speed of a ball definitely depends on the speed of the person throwing the ball. Um, and that's just one example, but everything in our life kind of behaves in that way. And yet somehow objects that move at the speed of light, so for example, this photon, although it turns out it applies for all objects moving at the speed of light, if you move at the speed of light or if an object moves at the speed of light, its speed is completely independent of the speed of the source, okay? It can't go faster than the speed of light. It can't go slower than the speed of light. It will always travel at one foot per nanosecond, no matter how fast Bob is moving, he'll say that, and no matter how fast the train is moving, Bob will say that the speed of that photon is one foot per nanosecond. That is just plain bizarre. It certainly flies in the face of common sense, um, where common sense is our daily experience. So if we're really going to build a theory of special relativity on top of a pillar that claims that the speed of light is constant, we better have some actual experimental evidence that the speed of light is constant. I mean, it's one thing for me to say that or Einstein to say that, um, but we actually want to see, is that actually how nature behaves? So um, what we're going to talk about in the next few minutes is the experimental evidence that exists that shows that the speed of light um, is one foot per nanosecond independent of the speed of the source. Uh, and you might hear me say things like, oh, the speed of light is independent of the speed of the flashlight, just acknowledging that we can think of the source of light as a flashlight and the photon being emitted from it. And just to summarize, if a flashlight travels at 90% of the speed of light relative to the ground and it emits a photon, someone on the ground will say that photon is traveling at the speed of light, period. Let's see what the evidence is. Okay, so here is the evidence that I want to point to. Um, this is a paper that was published in 1964. It's a little bit hard to read um, the date on this paper. But this is a paper that was published in Physics Letters in 1964. The title is The Test of the Second Postulate of Special Relativity in the GEV Region. Okay, so we know what the second postulate of relativity is, the constancy of the speed of light. And in the GEV region is just referring um, to the energy associated with a particle that's relevant for this experiment. We can put that detail aside for now, but let me explain what the experiment is. I'm going to zoom in um, on their diagram right here. Okay, and we see this beam line here. And in this experiment, all the action happens starting at the top right and moves down to the bottom left. So in this experiment, the um, scientists create a beam of particles that are called pions. And these pions have no charge, so they're referred to as pi zeros. Zero being the charge, not plus one, not minus one, but just zero. And a pion is a particle that lives for a very short time before decaying. So if you shoot a pion through the laboratory at some speed v, it will at some point decay, meaning change into two photons. So the pion is gone, and in its place are two photons, light, only light. And those photons will travel along, um, and you can make a measurement on those photons. Now think about what a flashlight is, right? A flashlight 
is a source of photons. Well, in this case, the pion itself is behaving like a flashlight, okay? It is a source of photons. And that's exactly um, what they're doing in this experiment. So we can think of the pion as being a flashlight, but better than most flashlights, we're able to accelerate this, this particle or this flashlight to very high speeds and then measure the speed of the photon that comes out of it, okay? So if we come back, um, if we come back to the experimental setup here, we have to now imagine that we have this beam of pions shooting down this way, okay? And when the pions, um, the pions will decay, and we'll have a photon now traveling down this line, okay? We're gonna focus um, our attention on these two points here, labeled A and A prime, and those are two locations where there is photon detectors, so they can um, detect the passing of a photon without stopping the photon or destroying it. They can just tell that the photon had crossed that location at a certain time. Um, and if we look carefully um, over here, we have a scale, okay? And in rough numbers, the distance between A prime and A is about five meters. In very rough numbers, we can say that that is approximately 15 feet because um, a meter is roughly three feet. Okay, so if the claim is true that photons travel at one foot per nanosecond, independent of the speed of their source, independent of the speed of the flashlight, we would expect a separation in time of about 15 nanoseconds um, of travel between um, A and A prime. Right? So the photon's coming along, it reaches A, then 15 nanoseconds later, it should get to A prime. Well, that all seems reasonable. So let's now look at the actual data. Okay, So here is a plot from this experiment showing um, the two detectors, A and A prime, and on the y-axis is counts. Counts means the number of times a photon um, interacted in detector A and detector A prime at a certain instant of time, okay? The x-axis, um, uh, the first axis here is just a, a parameter that they use to actually make the measurement, but each of these channel numbers corresponds to a time in nanoseconds. And they calibrate it so that A, uh, this peak in A corresponds to zero nanoseconds. And so we're basically looking at the time interval between when most photons arrive at A and when they arrive at A prime. And that's the distance left to right between these peaks, which corresponds to zero to 15 nanoseconds. So these peaks are indeed 15 nanoseconds apart, which is exactly what you'd expect um, for photons traveling at a speed of one foot per nanosecond. Now, the nice thing about this is you can repeat this experiment with the pion uh, moving at different speeds. In other words, you can change the speed of the flashlight um, and see what happens. And when you do so, you, you find that you consistently get 15 nanoseconds of travel time between the two detectors. Um, this pion is moving close to the speed of light itself. So we have a situation here where we have a flashlight moving near the speed of light, emitting photons, and relative to the ground, those photons are moving at the speed of light, no more, no less. So this is a really wonderful um, direct evidence in favor of um, the postulate, the second postulate of relativity, namely that the speed of light is constant independent of the speed of the source. And this has been known for many, many decades now. There are many other experiments um, that have reached all, all reached the same conclusion. Like every experiment that has been done to measure the speed of light with respect to the speed of the source um, has been consistent with the second postulate that the speed of light is constant independent of the speed of the source. Um, so for uh, the purposes of relativity, we can take that postulate as um, ver verified or validated experimentally. That said, you know, if in the future an experiment discovers that the speed of light in fact depends on the speed of the source, um, then that would be a really interesting opportunity in physics, right? Because one of these most beautiful theories in physics, special relativity, would be built on an assumption that is at least partially incorrect, okay? That day has not come yet. To the best of our knowledge, postulate two is correct. Um, 
but we always hold the possibility for new evidence to create new knowledge. All right, so that does it for principle of relativity um, and um, constancy of speed of light, and those are our two foundations for special relativity. Until next time, folks, be well.